Good evening. Welcome again to another weekly Bible study uh, at Fourth Baptist Church in Portsmouth, Virginia. Uh, we are delighted to have you to share with us, to join with us, to study with us, and to worship with us. Thank you so much for being a part of this uh, Bible study on tonight. We're grateful and we're thankful to all of you that are watching us on tonight. Sister Connie Baltimore, we praise God for your presence tonight. Thank you so kindly uh, for sharing and joining with us. Amen. We are thankful and grateful unto the Lord for yet another opportunity uh, that the saints of God, the brothers and the sisters can get together and that we might be able to share uh, our faith, our testimonies, our witness, and our understanding of God's word. So thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. Reverend Peggy Goulet, thank you so much for joining with us. Deacon Robert Goulet, thank you for sharing with us. Sister Nan uh, Toppins, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. Brother Roy Coppich uh, and Sister Juliet Williams, thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Amen. My friend, Sister Barbara Roan, thank you uh, for sharing with us tonight. Valerie Doja, we praise God for your presence as well. Delicia Ward, thank God uh, for you. And Deacon For Forrest Robinson, Jr., praise God for your presence on tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. We're going to be, and Sister Ivy Bond, praise God for your presence. Amen. We're going to be studying tonight uh, from the book of 1 Peter. Amen. 1 Peter chapter number 1. Denise Johnson, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight as well. Amen. My friend, Laverne Felton Branch. Oh, what a blessing it is uh, to have you to share with us on this evening. Laverne, thank you so much uh, for all that you do for everyone uh, that you come in contact with. We praise God for you and for everyone else. Sister Deborah Grimes, praise God for your presence tonight. Deacon Mike White, praise God for you. We are praying for you and your wife, hoping and praying that things are better and you're feeling better. To God be the glory. Deaconess Maud Hall, praise God for your presence. Sister Sharon Gray, thank God for your presence tonight. Deaconess Jennifer Goodman Hayes, we are blessing God, praising God for you. Sister Beverly Shelton, amen. The songbird is with us tonight. So God bless your heart. Amen. Sister Valerie Dozier, uh, Deacon William Hayes Jr., thank God for your presence tonight as well. To God be the glory. <clears throat> uh, Trustee Melinda Foss, we are thanking God and praising God uh, for your presence tonight as well. Amen. Let's go to God with a word of prayer. Gracious God, our Father, we come before you tonight uh, with expectation that our hearts and our minds will be enlightened by that word and that your word may illuminate our thoughts and our actions, and that we may continue to increase our faith and our trust in you. Bless us now, dear God, as we go forth in this lesson. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank God for uh, those of you that are sharing with us on tonight. Amen. I get excited when I hear and when I see uh, the saints of God uh, names scroll in front of me. I just get excited uh, to see your names as they scroll. Uh, Sister Kim Pender, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight as well. Sister Susie Austin, praise God for your presence tonight. All right, get enrolled. Let's get it done, Susie. Let's get it done. Amen. You can do it. You can do it. To God be the glory. <clears throat> Amen. Tonight, we're going to be uh, studying from 1 Peter chapter number one. Amen. Sister Debbie White, praise God for your presence tonight as well. But before we get into our lesson, as usual, we always want to get our commercials out of the way. So we want to let you know that we want to send a happy birthday uh, to Deaconess Jessica Bridgeford. Amen. Who will be celebrating her birthday, I believe, this coming October 29th. And we are just praising God and wishing her happy birthday. Not only that, but let's chat. Uh, will take place again on November the 4th at 7 p.m. Deaconess Danielle Beeman will be sending out the information so that you can join us in our Zoom meeting for that event. Changing Spaces uh, is our uh, uh, counseling session, our counseling ministry, and you can get a hold of us uh, and schedule a counseling session 
by dialing this number, 757-412-9219. Amen. And our youth Bible study uh, convenes every Thursday night at 7 p.m. And Deaconess Dixon uh, will be sending out the uh, Zoom information where you can join us by way of Zoom meeting with your children. Sister Dolores George, we praise God for your presence tonight. Sister Brenda Carter, thank God uh, for your presence tonight as well. We uh, will be conducting, we will be having a trunk or treat this coming Monday night, uh, beginning at 6 p.m. and concluding at 8 p.m. Amen. We want to invite you to bring your children uh, that we might uh, be able to observe Halloween in a safe environment. Um, Brother Wesley Jones, Big West, thank you for sharing with us tonight. So this coming Monday night, trunk or treat from 6 to 8. Bring your children. Amen. That they may be able to receive uh, uh, candies and, and observe uh, Hall Halloween in a safe environment. Anitra Hector, thank you so much for sharing with us. Ganetta Mosley, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Wonderful job uh, teaching a lesson on Sunday. To God be the glory. I thank God. I knew that you would do an outstanding job. Amen and amen. Men's Day is coming up on November the 13th. And we're inviting and we're encouraging all of our men uh, to come and join with us uh, as we worship together and celebrate Men's Day on October the 13th at 10 a.m. Our preacher will be none other than the Reverend Curtis Edmonds, Jr. Uh, he will be sharing with us on that day. I want you to make sure that as you watch television and see the commercials all about voting and things of that nature, listen, the main thing is for you to register and then vote. Amen actually go to the polls or vote early or uh, 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 absentee, battle, whatever it might be. Uh, amen. Practice your God-given right uh, to vote. Amen. Don't let everybody try to suppress and discourage you uh, from voting because of all of the trickery and conniving uh, that has been put in place here recently. Amen. To God be the glory. So, my brothers and sisters, I want you to get out and vote. If you have a teenager uh, that is of age to register and vote, hey, man, grab them by the hand and take them down, register them, and then let them vote. We are praising God and we're thanking God. The only way we're going to get uh, uh, the will of God and the way of God, the truth uh, in politics, is that we've got to vote in truthful people. We've got to vote in people that love the Lord. Amen. Just not talking about loving the Lord, but actually love the Lord and love the truth. Amen. So let's get out and vote. Sister Connie Baltimore continues to collect on behalf of the Hampton University Proton Therapy. Uh, she will be putting together chemo care packages, and uh, we're asking you that you would contribute uh, to her effort, uh, that we might be a blessing uh, to those individuals that are undergoing uh, treatment and therapy uh, at Hampton University uh, Proton Therapy Unit. Amen. So give her a call or see her Sunday and uh, make a contribution. Amen. To, that, to a, such a worthy, worthy cause. I want you to be in prayer uh, for uh, the Randolph Simmons family. Uh, Randolph Simmons is the uncle of our very own Jennifer Goodman Hayes and Ivy Bond. Uh, he went home to be with the Lord. And uh, we want you to lift up his family, pray for his family. Amen. That they might uh, receive the, the strength and the comfort from the Lord as they go through. Not only that, I want you to pray for the Lord Saunders family. Amen. Uh, Brother Saunders went home to be with the Lord. And uh, services are as follows. Thursday, uh, there will be a viewing uh, at uh, from 5 until 8, 5 until 7 at Steel Bullet Funeral Home. And then services will be on Friday uh, at 11 a.m. at the Steel Bullet Funeral Home. So lift those families up in your prayers. Onita Allen, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Monica Dewberry, thank you so much. Always a pleasure uh, to have you uh, join with us in Bible study. So, my brothers and sisters, we want you to be an encouragement to somebody, be an encouragement, lift them up, and that they might receive the blessing of the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. Sister Baltimore is up to 81 packages. Her goal is to have 100 packages. So uh, we need you to get out and help her uh, that she might achieve uh, her 100 packages for the uh, Hampton University Proton Therapy Unit. To God be the glory. 
want you to be uh, understanding that our reef ministry continues to function well. And in order for you to be uh, received from our grief ministry, you can dial this number, 757-708-0770. And Reverend Peggy Goulet and her staff will be more than happy uh, to uh, share with you, to support you uh, during this time of grief. Our prayer line is open and available to you. Uh, all you have to do is dial this number, 267-807-9605. With access code nine eight five one five five, Amen. And Reverend Thomas and Reverend Thomas uh, will be more than happy to pray with you and pray for you uh, as you reach our prayer line. Our prayer line is available every Wednesday from six thirty to seven, and every Sunday from nine thirty uh, until ten a.m. Amen. Maggie King, my friend, good to see you today. Thank you for sharing with us on today. Trustee Patrick Emmanuel, we praise God for your presence as well. Amen. I want you to lift up your brothers and sisters in prayer. We have always stand in need of prayer. I want you to pray for Sister Patricia Howard. I want you to pray for Calvin Freeman, uh, Charlene Thomas, uh, Deaconess Dorothy Riddick, uh, Dolores George, Donnie L. Beeman, Herbert Hall, Mabel Simmons, Leticia Reed, uh, Anthony Toppins, William Smith, uh, the Todd family, Jeanette Shoemate, Ken Weaver, Lucretia White and her father, Bertha Mitchell, Louise Bowser, Onita Allen, uh, Reverend and Mrs. Clyde Doxey, Reverend Frieda Thomas, uh, 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 Sister Francie Hasty, uh, the Council family, Ronald Jones, Sonia Claude, Deborah uh, Grimes, uh, Dorothy Spruill, Katie Coppage, Darlene Saunders, Martha Moss, Ralph Thomas, the Williams family, Michael Jones, Marsha Johnson, Reverend Florence Pender, Xavier Orton, Beverly Shelton, Betty and Richard Smith, Michelle Springs, Shonda uh, Shamley, Casey Flowers, uh, Lillian Orton, Carol Gore, uh, Cornish Brown, Angie Roberts, Vera Saunders, and Yvonne Kanchler. Continue to lift your brothers and your sisters up uh, in prayer. And I tell you, when you pray, amen, and you show sure enough pray earnestly, amen, God will receive and hear our blessings, and you will re be able to change uh, the mindset of individuals. Amen. To God be the glory. I want you to know that Vera Ransom, uh, Saunders, uh, Connie uh, King Brown are uh, doing well. Amen. And Mike Jones has improved tremendously as well. Thank you so much, Maggie King, for that information and that update uh, on our friends uh, that have been struggling and going through. Amen and amen. Isn't it wonderful that even though we're not uh, physically today inside the church, that we can still have church. Amen. We can still have church and still thank the Lord for all that he has done. Sister Estelle Brown, we praise God for your presence tonight. Thank you so much uh, for joining with us on tonight. Well then, now that we got our commercials and our announcements all out of the way, let's get into the word of God. And I believe uh, that we're going to be informed tonight. We're going to be blessed tonight uh, from this book, First Peter. Uh, First Peter, this writer is none other than Peter. Peter was uh, one of the original apostles of Jesus Christ. As a matter of fact, most people will say uh, that Peter was the leader uh, of the apostles. He was very outspoken. Uh, he was very opinionated. Uh, Peter was one of those individuals uh, that, uh, that oftentimes, uh, when no one else would, would take action or say anything, Peter would speak up and Peter would take action. Amen. So uh, he has a sense as we look at this book tonight, uh, that he is the leader uh, of the, all the apostles or the apostolic group. Peter was an important and influ influential man in the early church. And because of his influence and because of the authorship of this text, uh, many of the writers, uh, many of the readers rather, uh, would uh, uh, pay strict attention to what Peter uh, was writing and what Peter was saying. His name is mentioned in the Gospels. Uh, 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 more than anyone except the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. No one speaks in the gospel as often as Peter did, and Jesus spoke more to Peter 
than any other individual that he spoke to in the Bible. Amen. Brayna Green, thank you, my friend, for sharing with us. We're on 1 Peter chapter number 1. Amen. Just give me some background before we get into the lesson tonight. Amen. So Jesus had to deal with Peter. Amen. More than a lot of individuals would give him credit. Jesus rebuked Peter more than any other disciple. Peter was the only disciple who dared to rebuke Jesus. Amen. Peter confessed Jesus more boldly and accurately than any of the other apostles or disciples. Peter denied Jesus more forcefully and publicly than any of the other disciples. Jesus praised Peter more than any other disciple, and Jesus addressed Peter as Satan along, uh, um, alone among the other disciples or apostles. So, since Peter is so important and prominent in the gospel records, it is worthwhile for us to remind ourselves uh, of some of the important mentions of Peter uh, 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 and what uh, he should do. So Peter put his net out. Remember the Lord said, cast out thy net. And, and Peter did that and caught, took in a massive drive of, uh, of fish. Uh, P Peter went on a unique outreach uh, trip uh, with the other apostles. Peter was the one that stepped out of the boat. Amen. During a raging storm. And uh, the Lord told him to step out. And by faith, he stepped out of that boat. So Peter was one of those individuals that denied, well, he denied Jesus Christ. But also, Peter was the one who received a personal visit from the resurrected Jesus Christ after the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, Peter received a personal visit, okay, from the resurrected Jesus on the day of the resurrection. So it gives us an idea of the importance of the man or the individual. Rodney Sands, thank you, my uh, juniors. Thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on this evening. So Peter introduces himself in this text. He says, verse number one, 1 Peter chapter one, verse one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers uh, scattered uh, throughout uh, Pontus, Galatia, uh, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. So he introduces himself as an apostle. So why is this important to us? It's important because it should suggest to us uh, by the fact of the phrase of Jesus Christ is attached to no other New Testament uh, office or position whatsoever. Stanford Locust, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us. We do not read of teachers. We do not read uh, of prophets of Jesus Christ, teachers of Jesus Christ, evangelists of Jesus, Jesus Christ. We only hear about apostles of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, as we begin to look at this, Peter addresses this group. He says, elect, according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, uh, through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and sprinkling of the, unto the obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So, Peter now begins to open up this text, and he begins to talk with those, uh, to the church that is scattered. Amen. Andrew Roberts, thank you so much for sharing with us today. Now, when Peter writes this text, he writes it to Jerusalem. He writes it to uh, a large uh, 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 scattering of churches, and this letter makes its way around to all of those churches. Amen. And, and that's why it says Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, you know, because this was not written to any one congregation, but intentionally written to all Christians. So 1 Peter is addressed to all Christians at the time. Peter's description of his readers and all of his, uh, uh, all of these who will read this, he says, elect. Now, why does Peter say elect? When he uses the word elect, it gives us the idea of chosen. Amen. So we look at what Peter is saying to his writers, to his readers, that you have been chosen by God. Amen. That's a significant uh, 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 terminology uh, to know how to be addressed as a chosen individual or a chosen vessel by God in any particular or unique sense. Amen. So Peter wants them to know that in spite of what they are dealing with, what they're struggling with, you have been chosen 
Amen. By God. Dean John Bridgeford, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So he uses this to bring them into the understanding that God has not forgotten you. Amen. You may be struggling now. What was going on during this time is that the church was being persecuted. And when they were being persecuted, a lot of them were being killed. Uh, so they scattered. They, 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 they went all out. Amen. So Peter now is telling them that, hey, listen, although you are scattered, although you are fearful for your life, although you are struggling and suffering, you have not been pushed aside by God. Amen. God knows who you are. God knows where you are. God knows your heart. God knows your faith. God knows all of those things. Amen. So you are the chosen of God. Amen. And when God selects you, it's, it's not like mere man uh, doing a selection. Darlene uh, Hines Saunders, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us on tonight. Man selects from the outside. Amen. The outward appearance, uh, the, 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 the great uh, uh, ability to articulate and verbalize. Amen. The, the, the genius of one's mind. That's what man selects from. But what God selects from is from the inside out. God selects from the heart. Amen. So therefore, God knows your heart and God knows my heart. And God knows those who have been that have made a true confession of faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, those who have truly repented of their sin. God knows who you are. Amen. And this God did, Peter says, by the foreknowledge of God. So when we get into the foreknowledge of God, we need to understand that this is not some random, uh, uh, uninformed uh, 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 foreknowledge. It's not something that, that, that God just did. Well, I think I'll select. He did not reach his hand into any type of barrel and pull out a name. Amen. God knew all along those who would respond positively to the gospel. Amen. Positively to Jesus Christ. Amen. Not individuals who just had a head knowledge of him, amen, who had read about him, who had been taught about him, but was still struggling as to whether this is true or not. But God made this uh, decision based upon those that he knew before he even sent Jesus into the world, that they would respond favorably and positively uh, to the call of Jesus Christ. Amen, somebody. So this is not some random selection a process that God is going through. God doesn't look at, uh, blindfold himself and just reach out his hand. And the third person that I touch, that's going to be one. The sixth person that I touch, that's going to be two. God doesn't do that. Amen. But God already knew through his omniscience. Amen. And that's a big word, y'all. God knew through his omniscience. Amen. God knows everything. He's all knowledgeable. Amen. Nothing gets by him. Nothing catches him by surprise. God knew long time ago those of us who would respond uh, to the call of the, of the gospel, who would respond openly by faith, that would repent, but will humble ourselves and, and accept Jesus Christ truly as our Lord and our Savior. It's not based upon uh, 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 those who have and those who do not have. It's not based upon uh, whether or not we come from the right side of the track or the wrong side of the track. It's not based upon uh, your financial situation or status. It's not based upon your genius. It's not based upon the influence that you have. It's not based upon any of that. It is not based upon your political persuasion. And God doesn't, it doesn't matter to God. It makes no difference to God whether you are Democrat or Republican or Independent or Green Party. It doesn't matter to God. That's not what the selection process is all about. Amen. This is about individuals themselves whose heart, amen, is fertile and ripe uh, for uh, the Holy Spirit to come in and break up the fallow ground and that they will receive by faith, amen, the Lordship of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, can I let you know, you're right, Monica, God still invites everyone today. It does not matter. Amen, somebody. does not matter whether you're black or white, whether you're Hispanic, brown, blue, whatever. God doesn't, it doesn't matter to God. God is solely, totally looking at the contents of your heart. And can I let you know, 
before you even considered uh, being born again or accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life. God already knew what you, your decision was going to be. Amen. To God be the glory. That's what it means when, when it says the foreknowledge of God. The foreknowledge of God simply means that God already knew. Amen. According to his knowledge, not according to man's knowledge. Amen. So this speaks about his omniscience. The foreknowledge includes prior knowledge of our response to the gospel, as I simply said, and not solely dependent on it. Amen. God already knew it. The, the decision is God's. He already knows what your decision is going to be. He already knows what your decision has been. He already knows how your faith, uh, whether you're faithful or not. He already knows whether you are for real or not. Amen, somebody. You see, there's a lot of stuff going on in our world today, in particular, the church. Amen. The church is so lopsided with uh, this thing of, 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 do I really have to believe in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of my life? Or do I just have to believe in God? Jesus said it this way. I am the truth, the way, and the life. No one coming to the Father but by me. So the only way that we can get to heaven and the only way that we can say that we've been born again is that we must honestly, we must truthfully, we must uh, humbly uh, kneel and accept the Lordship of Jesus Christ, uh, that he is our Lord and our Savior, and that he died on the cross for the salvation of all mankind, particularly your salvation. Gloria Boone, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So, Peter says it this way, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit, unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus, grace be to you, and peace be multiplied. Multiplied. So, what he also says is that, hey, if you are going to be, if you have been born again, and because God has chosen you, then God also uh, 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 provides some essential results, essential results of this election or this choosing. And that is sanctification and obedience. Now, what does sanctification mean? Sanctification implies to be set apart. Amen. It simply means that, that we are not to be like everybody else. Amen. We are not to be and act like the world acts. Do the things that the world does, not to worship any other false gods and things of that nature. Amen. So set up sanctification means that God has set us apart. We're in the world, but not of the world. Amen. So the process of sanctification means that every day, every moment, something of the world is removed from my being and more of the Holy Spirit is deposited in my being. Amen. Kim Apasina, uh, 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 thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. Richard Kanzler, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. So it is essential that we understand that, uh, that God requ requires of us and desires of us to be sanctified. Amen. And be obedient. Obedience simply means that we're going to obey. Amen. We're going to obey God. Now, it's, it's better for us to obey God rather than to obey man. Amen. So, so my, my, thank you so much, uh, Monica. God is better than pine soul. He cleans, sanctifies our dirty spirits. That's a good way uh, to look at it. Amen. His spirit, Holy Spirit within us, eradicates, wipes away all of those things so that we can be holy like he is holy. As a matter of fact, now, in this chapter, God says, uh, be ye holy, for I am holy. And part of it, trying to get to be holy is that we must sanctify ourselves, set ourselves apart uh, from the mindset, uh, from the dealings, and from the, the way the world acts and receives and treats one another. Amen, somebody. It's not just coming to church on Sunday morning, acting spiritual. Amen. Singing, praying, preaching spiritually and then going out uh, and then getting back into the world and doing all the things that the world does, that's not what this is all about. That means on a 24-7 period, amen, every day, every hour, 
I'm living the way that God wants me to live. <coughs> I'm purifying myself. Amen. So he says that the way we get to this is by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. There is cleansing, my brothers and sisters, uh, from sin that has been provided by God uh, to us through the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Am I right about it? So what Peter is saying is that God has sanctified us. God has chosen us. God has uh, 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 allowed us to be what we call born again by the blood of Jesus. Amen. The blood of Jesus washes away all our sins. And there is nothing else that can do that. Jesus died for our past sins. He died for our present sins. And he died for our future sins. Amen. And we're going to be uh, removed uh, from uh, the power of sin. We're going to be removed from the presence of sin. Amen, somebody. One day, we're going to be removed from the very presence of sin. When we all go to heaven and be with the Lord. Amen. To God be the glory. So let's look at verse number three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Amen. So he says, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So what Peter is simply saying in this text is that he's considered, uh, he's considering the salvation that God provides to all mankind. And, and, and what he's saying is this is the motive of God's work is found in uh, Jesus Christ and not in us. Amen. It's, you are not saved and you cannot save yourself. Amen. But it is the sacrificial act, the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ that, uh, that uh, 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 was uh, uh, accomplished on Calvary for your sins and my sins. So don't get the puff, puffed headedness and think that you save yourself. You can't save yourself. And, oh, newsflash, you can't save anybody else either. The only thing we can do, amen, is to give ourselves, humble ourselves before the Lord, repent, accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives, and then live a life of holiness. Live a life uh, conducive to the life of, of, of Jesus Christ and live a life that is pleasing unto God. Amen. So Peter then began to say unto us that he has begotten us again to a living hope uh, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Can I let you know, the hope that we have will never die. Amen. Why? Because it's based upon Amen. The, de the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we don't have to worry about uh, uh, the, the fact of, you know, uh, God provided salvation through Jesus. I guess it, it only lasts for a little while. That's not the truth. Amen. This hope is an eternal, everlasting work that Jesus accomplished on Calvary. So all of this goodness that, that Peter is talking about begins with mercy. Amen. It's by the grace and mercy of God that all of us are saved today. Amen. And guess what? A lot of us are saved, but we don't act like we're saved. Amen. We live our lives trying to straddle the fence. We're trying to be in the world and be uh, uh, with the Lord at the same time. But the Bible tells us uh, that you cannot serve two masters. Amen. You're either going to love the one and hate the other. Uh, you, you, you cannot uh, love God and still love the world uh, at the same token. You, you've got to commit one to the other. You either love the Lord with all your heart, body, and soul, or you love the world more than you love the Lord. Amen. He says that he has begotten us again. Amen. The wording uh, begotten us uh, again is different from being born again, but the meaning is the same. Peter's idea is that when a person is saved, they are made a new creation through Jesus Christ. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that comes in from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, where it talks about 
this old man and the new man, that we are a new creation in Christ. Amen. If any man pleases God, amen, uh, that, that, that he must be able to void himself, rid himself of that old nature, that old character, amen, and crucify that, but then also allow the Holy Spirit to deposit within you uh, the right kind of attitude, character, uh, things of that nature, uh, to be able to please and walk worthy with the Lord. Amen. It says a living hope because we have e eternal life in a Savior who has conquered death himself. Because he conquered death, everything that comes out of that is alive. Our hope, our faith, our trust, our dependence upon God, all of that is a living hope. Amen. It will never die because Jesus has defeated. He has overcome the world. He has defeated death, hell, and the grave. And because he has defeated them and been victorious over them, and he uh, it never will die again. Amen. He is our living hope. And my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Oh, you follow what I'm saying? See, these old songs have some significant meaning. Amen. Because it, it takes us back to Scripture uh, to make us understand of what the Scriptures really are trying to say. Amen. So our hope will never die as long as your hope and your trust and your faith is in Jesus Christ. Amen. So my brothers and sisters, it is also called a, holy, a, a living hope because it is imperishable. It will never die, it will never fade away, it will never rust away. It's always alive. How many of you know that every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before? Amen. Every time that the Lord wakes you up or wakes me up, uh, gives us an opportunity to once again experience the liveliness of our hope in Christ Jesus. Amen. And one of these old days, the Bible tells us, uh, that that hope that festers within us, that lives within us, is going to be brought to a reality because we're going to stand with him. He's going to come back and receive his church. Amen. And I don't know what he's going to look like. I don't know what, what, what his makeup would be, what kind of body he will have. I don't know. But one thing I do know is whatever type of body he has, I want to be just like him. And the Bible tells us, that we're going to be like him. Amen. But until then, the Bible tells us that we got to act like him. We got to walk like him. We got to talk like him. We, we got to love everybody. We got to learn how to forgive one another. We've got to learn all of those things because that's part of his character. Amen. That's part of, 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 of being like Christ. That's part of trying to be perfect. We will never, as long as we're in this body, this human body, we will never reach perfection. But as we live our lives through Jesus Christ, then we can strive to be perfect. Amen. We can strive to be like him. Amen. Yvonne Kanzler, thank you so much for sharing with us on tonight. Amen. So let's look at verse number four. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. Amen. So it simply says that he's already saved us and through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And one of these old days, we're going to die and we're going to go to heaven. We're going to be resurrected and go to heaven. We're going to be caught up to be with the Lord in the air, uncorruptible and undefiled, and that does not fade away. Amen. So we are kept by the power of God through faith. Amen. Verse number five who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last times. Amen. So this enables us to endure through faith until Jesus comes. Amen. The promise of our inheritance is certain because the Bible says, and Peter says in this chapter, we are kept by the power of God through faith. Amen. My brothers and sisters, faith is a powerful thing. Faith, faith is just trusting and believing without a shadow of a doubt. Amen. And sometimes, my brothers and sisters, our faith can be uh, 
uh, uh, uh, uh, attacked and through trouble, through tr problems and all of that. And sometimes we can wonder, does God even care? Does God know what I'm going through? Does God know what I'm dealing with? And as we began to ask those questions, it addresses and sometimes causes our faith to perhaps waver just a little. But can I let you know, this says that we are kept by the power of God through faith. So the more we lean on him, the more we are faithful to him, the more we trust in him, and the more that we depend on him. Even though the world says everything is falling apart, God says, I got you. Amen. Even though the doctors may say you know, you know, your, your body is, is just not responding, God says you're healed. Amen. And this is what faith does for us. Faith tells us and faith shows us things that we cannot see with our natural eye. Faith says that I'm going to see and I'm going to believe in my heart what my eyes cannot see. Amen. So faith simply says, look, all you got to do is just look spiritually at God from your heart. And my faith in God and the power of God, believing and trusting in the power of God, leads me to believe that everything is going to be all right. Laverne Jackson, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. So keep the faith, my brothers and sisters. Here's what we say at Fourth Baptist. If you have the faith, God has the power. Amen. Your faith keeps you in tune with God, trusted and believing in the power of God. That's what Peter just said here. Peter says we are kept by the power of God, what? Through faith. Whose faith? Our faith. Not God's faith, but our faith. Our faith keeps us believing and trusting and depending on God. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. Somebody ought to be shouting right now and knowing that even though I messed up, God gives me the opportunity to fix what I messed up. Amen. To God be the glory. I, I, I like what you're saying, Monica. Uh, sometimes we have to make, practice spiritual health, just like your, uh, you practice physical health. Amen. Sometimes you just got to put your faith in action. Amen. That's right, Onita. If God said it, I believe it, it's done. That's, that's all what faith says. Faith says, although, although I don't understand it, I can't figure it out, I don't know what's happening, I don't know why it's happening, I don't know what's going on, my faith says, God got it. Amen. God will see me through it. God will heal me. God will deliver me. God will uh, forgive me. God will allow me to rise above this. Amen. Whatever it might be. Listen, have you ever noticed that when you have surgery, amen, and immediately after surgery, you're in no shape to get up and run around the hospital or run up and down the street. You're in no shape. It takes time for your body to get back in to the shape that it needs to be, amen, before you can do several things. Sometimes it's just a matter of walking. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of talking. Sometimes it's a matter of movement. But over a period of time, each day, your body begins to respond to the healing. Amen. And this is what Peter is saying in our text, that, hey, listen, it may not be a sunny day today, but I believe that the sun is going to come out one day. Amen. I may be in a rainstorm or a shower or whatever, but I believe that the sun is going to shine sooner or later. Amen. That's right, Sister Baltimore. Uh, my faith says I know God can, and I believe he will. Amen. What a wonderful way of presenting that. Amen. To God be the glory. So God's power is the, is the mechanism in which we find our security. Amen. God's ability, God's power, God's all-knowingness is, is the mechanism that we uh, uh, can, can deal, deal with to find ourselves secure in the Lord. We are kept by the power of God through faith. Amen, somebody. Meaning our faith, not God's faith, but our faith. The person who is kept is a person abiding uh, in a continuing relationship uh, of faith with God. 
Amen. It's just not when I need God to do something. That's not when I need God to pay my bills. But when things are going well and I have no major concerns whatsoever, my faith is still being developed. My faith is still strong and my faith is still trusting in the Lord. Amen, somebody. You know, today's society is one of those societies that really does not practice, uh, amen, uh, on, on a large scale, really does not practice faith. Amen. They practice as to who do I know that can get me through this? Who do I know that can pay this for me? Who do I know that can help me with this or help me with that? We are too dependent. Our society is too dependent upon individuals and things of this world. Amen. But all we have to do is stand still, as the words say. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Listen, God will surround you with individuals that will help you. Listen to what I just said. God will surround you. God will provide to you individuals that will help you. But don't you ever forget that those people were sent, those people were provided by God for your help. Amen. For your, uh, uh, your need and for your trust. They didn't just come out of the woodworks. Amen. God sent them. Amen. So thank God for those individuals that who, who have a true uh, burning in their heart to be of aid and assistance to, to, to help you along the way. Don't ever forget, no man is a mountain. We don't, we don't live in this world by ourselves. So God will send individuals in our lives to help us, and God will take away individuals from our lives to help us. Amen. God may say, hey, this is not a person that you need in your life, so I'm going to create some friction, and they're going to get out of your life. Don't get upset. God is just trying to make sure that you continue to be dependent upon him. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. So Peter now begins to come to us. And let's look at verse number six. He says, Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. So he says, it, In this you greatly rejoice. Rejoice in what? In keeping in God's keeping power. We're rejoicing in knowing uh, that uh, as we go through uh, our trials and tribulations, our, our storms and things in life, that, that God is yet with us, that God is keeping us. And he says this, knowing that he will, God will, keep us as our faith is tested by fire. Amen. So faith that is not tested is not faith at all. Uh-oh, time out, time out, Charlie, time out, time out. What do you mean? Listen, have you ever had to take a test? Amen. Let me back up. Have you ever had to take a class? And, and, and the instructor says, the teacher says, listen, at the final uh, uh, time of this class, you're going to have a major exam. Well, that exam is designed to test or to show uh, the uh, uh, amount of knowledge or wisdom that you have retained as you went through the class. So when God allows our faith to be tested, what he is truly saying to us is, I want to see what kind of knowledge retention you have, what kind of trust retention you have, and I want to see what kind of dependence upon him that you have. And then what he does is that as you go through that test, not only does he determine what level you are uh, in your trust and all of that, but he also builds upon that, gives you a greater faith, a greater a hope. Amen. Why? Because he brought you through it. And now that he brought you through it, you uh, get a, a, a stronger belief and trust that, hey, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be right now? So he not only tests our faith, but in the process of testing our faith, he is also building a stronger and deeper faith within us. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, you didn't go through this. You didn't go through your hurt. You didn't go through your pain. You did not go through your sorrow. You, you did not go through your struggle, your sickness, whatever it may be. You didn't go through it just to be going through it. 
Oh, I don't know why the Lord put the, put this on me. He didn't put it on you, but the thing about it is he allowed it to happen for your good. Amen. What God is trying to get you to do is take your mind and your eyes off of the natural, the things of the world are for people and things of that nature, and put your eyes and your mind and your heart upon him. Amen. Call on him and he will answer. I know he will. <coughs> All you got to do is call on the Lord. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. Excuse me. I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but somebody um, perhaps may be dealing with something tonight. You've been dealing with it for a little while. You've been dealing with it for a long time. But just because God has not delivered you from it just yet, does not mean that he cannot. It simply means that God is still testing your faith, that God is still testing your trust. God is still building your faith, and God is still maturing uh, your faith. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, have you seen some people that always seem to be happy, uh, always seem to have it all together? Can I let you know, my brothers and sisters, no one that I know of, amen, has it all together. All of us have something, one thing or another that we're dealing with. And the thing that you're dealing with may not be the same that I'm dealing with or vice versa. Amen. We all deal with different things. Amen. And God has given each of us a certain measure of faith. And what God wants to do is to test our faith to see if we're going to be faithful, if we're going to be truthful unto him, or are we going to listen uh, to the rafters. I, I was watching the football game the other night, and I noticed every now and then the quarterback would take his hands and put his hands up around his ears. And what that simply meant was, I'm trying to block out the noise from the gallery. Amen. And sometimes, our brothers and sisters in our world today, we need to block out the noise from the gallery. Well, who makes up the gallery? Those who really don't believe in the Lord. Those who are trying to break your faith, destroy your faith, those are the individuals uh, that, are, uh, that, are, that are sitting in the gallery. Every time you want to praise God, worship God, thank God, say hallelujah, amen, they're just sitting there trying to talk to you, trying to disturb, get your attention off of God. Amen. Every time the Lord is leading you and guiding you, you can see what the Lord is doing in your life. They're the ones that say, you know, you need to go, go, go right rather than going left. And God's leading you straight. Amen. Amen. I hope I pronounced this name right. Amen. Kalila Mosley, uh, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Clear the static of voices that do not have your best intentions or best intentions. Amen. You got to get rid of that stuff. You got to block it out. Amen. And keep your mind and your eyes and your focus on Jesus Christ. And when you keep your mind and your eyes and your focus on the Lord, amen, then the voice of God, the Spirit of God will lead you, guide you, provide for you, protect you along the way. Amen. That's what the Holy Spirit is sent to us to do. It is sent to us that we might be able to be encouraged by the Word of God. Amen, somebody. So Peter simply says in this text, he says that we can greatly rejoice Though now for a season. Amen. We can rejoice even now. And, and, and uh, uh, regardless of what we're dealing with, we can rejoice right now. Amen. If need be, you are in heaven. As you're going through something, through manifold temptation. You know, the devil is always trying to tempt us to do something. But Peter says, keep on rejoicing. Amen. We can rejoice right now. Amen. So, my brothers and sisters, if need be, you have been grieved. Sometimes it is through, it is thought that a strong Christian will never be grieved. That's not true. Amen. The idea is that Christians should be like, the idea that the world presents is that Christians should be like Superman. Though bullets are shot at Superman, they bounce off his chest. Amen. None of us have bulletproof chests. Amen. Or bulletproof uh, uh, or shields that will protect us. But there are some things. That the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, put on the whole armor of God. 
Amen. And uh, put on that shield of, of, of what? Of faith that, that will distract and destroy the fiery dots of the devil. Amen. It will deflect those things away from us. Amen. So what, what Peter is simply saying is that faith is tested by fire. And what does fire do? Fire burns up. Fire destroys all the impurities. Amen. It gets rid of all of that. If you ever put gold in a furnace and melt it down, the real gold will surface while all of the dross will fade away. And, uh, well, 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 the dross will surface and you can scrape it away. Amen. And then you have nothing but pure gold. All right. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be uh, 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 placed in the fire of life, if you want to say it that way, in the furnace of life, to be tested. And all of that stuff, impurities that are within us, as our faith continues to trust in him and develop by him, all of those other things will, will, will fade away, will be brushed away. And we shall come out as pure gold. Amen. We'll be, we shall come out stronger in our faith than we were before. I know <clears throat> that I'm right about that. Have I got any witnesses out there tonight that have gone through something and you can testify tonight? Amen. Uh, by just sharing with us one word, amen, hallelujah, whatever, that, 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 that your faith has been tested and you have discovered through the test that God is true. Amen. That God is a healer. God is a deliverer. You know, all you need to do is make sure that you continue to keep your mind, your eye, your focus on the Lord. Amen. So, so we need to make sure that we do that. Am I right about it? To God be the I'm not talking about just coming to church or just sitting in a Bible study or, or watching uh, on, 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 on uh, Facebook or, or, or YouTube or anything. Uh, that, that's not what I'm talking about. The devil does that. The devil comes to church. The devil knows how to talk the language. The, the, the devil knows how to dress. The devil knows how to act. Amen. All, the devil knows the word of God uh, to, to a certain extent. Amen. The devil knows all that. <clears throat> but the devil will never put his trust, his faith in God because he wants to destroy your faith amen, and your trust in the Lord. He wants you to say, this is not necessary and this is not a needful. All I got to do is just keep on doing what I'm doing. My brothers and sisters, I heard one of our members say a long time ago, thank you, Mona. Amen. If you keep on doing the same thing that you've always done, you will always get the same old results. It may not have been exactly that way, but that's what it means. Amen. That's what it means. I mean, I, I, I'm trying to get someone to, to understand tonight that you did not go through your situation simply because God was angry at you. No, 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 no. God was trying to develop your faith and your trust in him. Amen. And how many of you will attest to the fact tonight that you are better today? You are stronger today. Amen. You are wiser today. Amen. Because of your continuous faith and trust in God. And that's why, even though you still got to put up with some foolish stuff, you can still rejoice. Amen. Amen. The, song, the choir sang a, a song, something about a uh, hallelujah. Uh, my, 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 what is that fact that they say? My, my, my hallelujah belongs to you. Amen. And so we need to make sure that, 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 that we understand that even though we're going through, our hearts may be sad or broken or whatever it might be. Amen. My hallelujah belongs to God. Why? Because of what he's done for me. Amen. Because what he's doing in my life right now. Because he's with me. He's brought me through. He's bringing me through. Amen. He's carrying me through. All of those things is why our hallelujah and our praise belongs to God. Amen, somebody. Amen. If people are constantly trying to tell you, don't worship God, don't go to church, don't read your Bible, you know, all of those things, that's not of God. That's the Antichrist. Amen. The child of God, the true child of God, will look at a situation for what it is. Amen. Ask God for 
a clarity of that and vision for that decision or, or for that situation. Amen. And then allow the Spirit of God to lead. And he will do like the, 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 the quarterbacks uh, do uh, on, on, on a football team. He'll put his hands up to his ears and he will block out, amen, the noise from the rafters, amen, so that he might clearly hear the voice of God. Amen, somebody. Amen. I know, I know, I know that some of you are dealing with terrible situations right now and you really don't know what the end are going to be. You really don't know how this all is going to work out. But I want to emphatically say to you tonight, trust God. Trust God. Keep on believing and keep your faith and your mind stayed on him. Amen. To God be the glory. All you got to do is be faithful to God and then sit back and watch God work. Whew, Lord have mercy. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. So our faith is going to be tested. Regardless of how we feel about it, faith that is untested is not true faith at all. Amen. So when you ask God to, 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 to remove something out of your life, uh, remove this or remove that, or, or to bless you with this or bless you with that, be, be mindful that God is going to test your faith, your trust, and your belief, your dependence upon him. It's going to be tested. Amen. So as you deal with life situations today, as you deal with the struggles and all the other mechanisms that's going on in our world, just remember, this is just a test. This is just a test. And I don't know about you, but God has never failed one test whatsoever. Amen. He's always been successful in everything that he has done. Amen. To God be the glory. Listen, we didn't get a whole far this time, but we're going to pick this up next week, and we're going to pick up on uh, verse number seven. Amen. We're going to pick up on First Peter, verse number seven, next week. Amen. So if you want the privileges of being a child of God, you have to accept the responsibility of being a child of God. Go ahead on, Monica Dewberry. Are you preaching and helping here tonight? My Lord, have mercy. Say so, preacher. Amen. If you want the privileges of being a child of God, you have to accept the responsibility of being a child of God. Amen, somebody. To God be the glory. Don't move my mountains, Lord. Just give me the strength to climb it. Thank you, Reverend Goulet. I got all these preachers talking to me tonight. Praise God. Amen. And you're so right, both of you. Amen. So right, so clear. So let's keep our faith strong and continue to understand what Peter is trying to say unto us, that your faith will be tested. You're going to be tried. Amen. And as we go through this lesson next week, he's going to reveal unto us even more so the successes that come as a result of tried faith. Amen. To God be the glory. So my brothers and sisters, thank you so much uh, for sharing with us tonight. We're going to pick this up again next week uh, at 1 Peter chapter number 1, and we're going to uh, pick up at verse number, uh, verse number 7. Is that all right? So let me make this note in my notes uh, so that we can say we're going to start right here. Now I'm going to put a note right here in my Bible to say start next week. Amen. To God be the glory. All right. All right. So thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. We pray and we trust uh, that this Bible study has been a blessing and an encouragement to you, uh, that uh, your faith uh, may continue uh, to be strengthened and, and continue to grow uh, 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 for the betterment uh, and because of the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nina Dunstan, thank you so much for letting us know uh, that your mom is doing better. Amen. And we, pray, we praise God for her deliverance and from her, for her healing. And we will continue uh, to uh, pray for her. Amen. Uh, Sister Patricia Howell, we're going to pray uh, for her along the way. Amen. My brothers and sisters, if you have enjoyed this Bible study, enjoyed our lesson, our teaching, 
our worship. If you have enjoyed the ministry at Fourth Baptist Church, listen, you can uh, help us. You can uh, be an encouragement to us. Uh, and the way that you can encourage us is by uh, supporting our ministry financially as well as spiritually and by prayer. Amen. So in order to support this ministry financially, if you have an iPhone or iPad or, or laptop, whatever mechanism you might have, you can uh, go there and pull up the app called Givelify. This app called Givelify is a wonderful tool uh, that is utilized for the vast majority of churches today, uh, being that a lot of members have not returned uh, in person. So look up the app Givelify, tap on it, amen, and when you tap on it, search for Fourth Baptist Church, 726 South Street, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704, amen. And when you do that, a picture of the church will surface. Uh, when you see our church, amen, my picture will surface also, and you can enter in the amount that you want to bless the Lord, as you want to bless the ministry, tap on that again, and you have blessed the Lord, amen. You can find uh, the opportunity uh, to uh, get into Givelify, not only by uh, researching it, but you can go to our website. And our website, it'll have the icon giving. Amen. Tap on that and Givelify will pop up. Amen. And when it does, you can enter in the amount that you want to bless the Lord with and then tap on that again. Amen. To God be the glory. And you have blessed the Lord. If that does not suit you or you're not that uh, uh, savvy with the computer, then we can always do it the old way. Sit down, write a check. <clears throat> Address that check to 4th Baptist Church, uh, 726 South Street, uh, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23704. Slip it in the mail, and we will gladly receive it, or you can bring it by the church and drop it off at the church, and one of our uh, 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 staff members will assist you or we receive it, However, the Lord allows you to be a blessing, you ought to do so. Amen. To God be the glory. So, my brothers and sisters, thank you so much for all that you do and all that you have done in the past. We are dependent upon the Lord, that the Lord will make a way and that the Lord will provide a way for us to reconvene. Amen. Uh, uh, back in life in person in the church like we once did before. We are back in person. Amen. And what our prayer is, is that our members will be cautious and, and, and take care of themselves, but at the same time uh, return to the sanctuary that we might worship the way that we used to worship. But if not, we're going to be grateful and thankful unto the Lord for whatever he provides and how he provides the opportunity to worship together. Nothing beats in-person worship and fellowship. Amen to sit amongst the saints, to rejoice with the saints, to, to fellowship with the saints. What a blessing it is to be able to do that. Amen. To God be the glory. So, before we go, let us join together with a word of prayer. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have allowed us to gather tonight, to discuss tonight, to receive tonight. Thank you, dear God, for challenging our faith and allowing us to understand that our faith will be tested. And thank you, Father God, that even during the test, you are faithful unto us, that you will not allow us uh, to succumb uh, to all the fiery dots of the devil or the world. But you, dear God, will continue to rescue us, continue to bless us, continue to allow us to be healed and delivered, and uh, your Holy Spirit will lead us, guide us, and provide and direct us along the way. We pray, Father God, for the sick among us, we pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the families of those, Father God, who are struggling and going through because of loss. And we pray, Father God, that you will allow us to be a source of strength and support unto them, uh, that they may know that they are not alone, that you have provided inf individuals uh, to be with them at this time. Until then, Father God, continue to bless Fourth Baptist Church, bless his leadership, bless his fellowship, Bless your children and your people. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless your hearts, my brothers and sisters. Looking forward to worship with you this coming Sunday morning. And uh, we want you to come and be a part of our worship experience. 
won't you come? Amen. That we might gaze our eyes upon you, that you might enjoy the fellowship and the worship of the Lord. Amen. It's not about numbers. It's about being present with the Lord. Amen. Stay safe, everybody. Sister Dolores George says, stay safe, everybody. And I say the same thing to all of you. Stay safe. The, 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 the virus is not gone yet. Amen. But nonetheless, we're going to pray that the Lord will continue to bless us in our efforts to worship. Amen. And to praise his holy name. Until then, we look forward to sharing with you on Sunday morning. 10 a.m. worship service. 9 a.m. Sunday school. Amen. Come on out. I'm sure I know you will receive a blessing. Until then, good night, my brothers and my sisters. Looking forward to seeing you and sharing with you on Sunday morning. God bless you and good night.